Hi guys, George here with Virtual Staging again. Few days ago, Tony wrote a comment on one of my other videos about a problem with the shadow catch material in Corona. The problem was that Tony was using Arnold Renderer. And because I am a man of my principles, here is the new video on Virtual Staging with Arnold and 3ds Max. I really hope you like it. And by the way, if you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing after watching some of my other videos on this topic. And now, let's get started. I'm sure by now you already know this scene. I'm using the same scene where I have virtually staged the space with Corona, Vray 5 and now with Arnold Render. There is one little thing that I've changed though, the vase next to the bed. Regardless the render engine, in virtual staging we always start by loading the background photo inside the material browser. For those who have not watched the videos on the perspective match, which is the first step in virtual staging, may do so after watching this video. In my case, I had to convert the scene from Corona and I haven't changed any of the settings on the materials. The Arnold render version I use is 4.0.4 .4 and I have not changed any of the settings in the render setup menu either. As we can see, my render comes out black, but due to a strange luck I introduced Max. I had to disable the visibility of the rendering buckets. Hey, don't fall asleep yet. Now it's time for action. Find and drag and drop the shadow matte material and then map to material also. Virtually, you don't have to do much on those materials. Just connect your background photo to the shadow mat and remember, always keep and set the environment to screen. As you can see, I cannot assign the shadow mat directly to my environment object, in this case the room, but then you can assign the shadow mat to map to material and now try to assign map to material to your background environment. Hold on to your rendering button guys, we are not ready yet. Let's see if I forgot to add the background photo to my environment slot. No, I haven't. It is there, but it's not doing anything at all. Despite that, I will reassign the map again and keep it activated. I will render a preview. You can notice there is something happening and you might see that I have set my exposure control already in order to see my background map correctly, not over or underexposed. If you haven't opened the render setup, go to Arnold Render and find Environment tab, switch the mode from Advanced to Physically Based, choose your source to be Custom Map and assign your background map to the option. It is a progress, but we still are lacking shadows. And now let's figure out how we can get some shadows inside that image. My next step is to add some lights. In my case, I have already done that. First light is Arnold light set to Sky Dome with, guys, pay close attention. Activated Neutralize Energy option. Neutralize Energy option casts diffuse light onto your 3D objects, but not on your matte material object. I have added the two lights on the windows, both lights have neutralized energy activated and their intensity is set to 1 and exposure between 6 and 8. Be careful to not overexpose your 3D objects by making the exposure value too high. And voila, we have shadows. 
Each of the both lights on the windows are playing important role for the shadows. You can adjust their intensity and exposure differently to simulate a difference in shadows. The next step is very important and you should pay close attention. Always experiment and plan what you need to achieve. If you place your lights behind the matte object, they will cast strange shadows where they might not be needed. I am going to bring back my light for the purpose of this scene as I don't need more shadows from what I have now. Now let's play with the contrast of the shadows. Select your light and find the shadow option called density. 1 means total black shadows and 0 means no shadows at all. Mine is set between 0.8 and 0.95 as I found that it, it is what I needed as a contrast. In your case might be different, but with most of the scenes the number I mentioned delivers what is needed. When you're ready with your lighting, you can do some final adjustments with the image control settings if you have activated the physical camera exposure control. This can be found inside the environment and effects panel or press 8 on your keyboard. Highlights, midtones and shadows are very important. In my case, I don't need to change them at all. One of my other rules of thumbs for virtual staging I set myself is to not amend the background photo in any way with the lighting or effects from 3ds Max regardless the rendering engine. If you do just that, you will achieve better results. Before I render high resolution image, I will add an ID AOV element. This can be found in rendering setup, AOVs and type object in the filter field. Make sure to copy the location of your render element. In Photoshop, load the original background photo, the JPEG and PNG versions of the Beauty Render and the ID Pass 2. Follow the order as on my screen. I noticed that I have some glitches and because of that I have to restore the shadows. In real life projects, probably you might not have the time to render everything again, so you will have to find a quick solution to your problem. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more tutorials on the Photoshop side of things for virtual staging.
If you think this tutorial was helpful to you, please like and share with your friends. Also, if you want to learn more about virtual staging in 3ds Max, watch any of the videos on the screen right now and link can be found in the comments as well. See you next time.